Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be explaining you an another scheduling algorithm. The name is shortest job first. SJF. So what exactly is the criteria here and what is the mode of operation? These two things first you all should know. So the criteria is the burst time. So I'll be writing here similar to the previous algorithm. Simply write down so that you remember during your revision time. The criteria for this algorithm is burst time. The mode of operation is non-preemptive. So this is also non-preemptive like FCFS. What is the logic process with smaller burst time is assigned to CPU. So whichever process has got, got the smaller burst time that process will be what first scheduled. And the next feature is if there is a tie, suppose any point of time if you see that there are two processes which have got the same burst time then the tie can be broken using the FCFS scheduling. What is the FCFS? Look at the arrival time. In this case, these two processes have got the same burst time, but look at the arrival time. They have arrived at different times. So the process which has arrived first will get the CPU. And the third point that is in the feature is it is non-preemptive in nature. So once the CPU is assigned, it will complete its, complete its job and then exit. It leads to starvation. It is practically not possible to know the burst time in advance. So these two points I'll tell you at the end of the session. Once you complete the what uh, writing down the Gantt chart as well calculating the different times. So start in the same manner how you have done because now at this point you know how to write the total turnaround time and the total average time. Same logic you are going to use here also. So I'll write this the heading for the chart, GAN chart, always it starts at what time? Zeroth. Now you are going to write what the different values for all these things because what is the statement in the question? Consider a set of five pro four processes. Consider a set of four processes with the arrival time and the burst time given. You are supposed to find out the average turnaround time and average waiting time. So these two things you are supposed to find out. So just start writing the values using the Gantt chart here. This is the chart wherein you can show what the times of scheduling the different processes. Start with zero. Arrival time you just see there is no process that has arrived at zero units. So just keep it vacant because the next process has arrived at what arrival time one. So what you can do is from zero to one you can simply show in the chart in this manner so that there is nothing getting scheduled between zero and one. Next at 1, at 1 which are the processes, there is one more process that has arrived at 1 and that is P3. So at 1, P1 and P3, these three are available, these two are available at this unit of time. Now what is that you have to do? Select the process with the smaller burst time. So among these two processes, P1 and P3, the smaller is which one? Process P3. So you will schedule first the process P3. Look here, process P3 needs two units of time, so it will complete its job at three. Fine. So this is how you have to carry out now. Next at three, that means at this point, which are the processes that are available? Yes, there is one more process which has arrived at two. So which is that P2? P2 is there at this point. And also you have what the previous process P1, P1 which is still waiting. So now at this point, you have two processes, P2 and P1, P2 and P1. Among these two, which has got the lowest burst time? This one, P1. So you will schedule P1. P1 requires how much? 3. So it will complete its job at 6. Next, at this point, that means at the what time? 6. At 6th unit, almost, if you look here, the arrival time is what? The last one that has arrived at 4th. So all the processes are available. Among that you have already scheduled what these two. So the remaining is P2 and P4. P2 and P4 are available at this point, at this point of time. So what is that you will do? You check for P2, it has arrived at it, its burst time is 4. Check for P4, it burst, burst time is 4. Now this is what I said you, when you have the same burst time for more than one process, then check at, check at what time these processes have arrived. So you will schedule the process which has arrived first now. So you are breaking this tie using the FCFS scheduling. So what is that you will be doing? Yes, P2 has arrived at 4, P4 has arrived at 4, but P2 has arrived first. So P2 will get its turn to execute. 
So P2 is requiring 4 units. So P2 will complete its job at 10. Then now definitely which one is that? The only process that is remaining is P4. So it will be the last one to get execute. P4 requires 4 units of time. So it will complete its job at what time? 14. So this is how you have written the uh, values in the Gantt chart. Simply fill the values completion time. P1 completion time is 6. P2 completion time is 10. P3 completion time is 3. And uh, P4 completion time is 14. Now compute the turnaround time. Turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. 6 minus 1, 5. 10 minus 2, 8. 3 minus 1, 2. 14 minus 4, 10. Then write down the values for the waiting time. Waiting time is turnaround time minus burst time. Turnaround time is here. 5 minus 3, 2. 8 minus 4, 4. 2 minus 2, 0. 10 minus 4, 6. Now add these values. 25. Okay. You are getting how much? 25 here. And what is the total waiting time? 4, 6, 7, 12. Yes, 12. 12 is the waiting time for this one. Now, what is that you have to do? Simply find out average turnaround time equal to how much total turnaround time divided by the number of processes. Here you have P1, P2, P3, 4 processes. Then average uh, uh, waiting time equals to total waiting time is 2 divided by total number of processes. For each of this, you write down the values. So, you will be getting for total turnaround time 6.25 millisecond. And for average waiting time, you will get the value as 12.4 millisecond. So, why I am writing millisecond is suppose in the problem if they have given uh, consider a set of four processes whose arrival time and burst time is given in millisecond. Then you write down even the uh, uh, values in milliseconds only. Whatever units are given, same type of units you are using here in the solution. Now, this is what you got the values. So, process with what the smallest burst time that is assigned to CPU for completing its job. But what is the feature uh, like one particular problem what we are seeing in this algorithm is look at this statement it is practically not possible it is practically not possible to know the burst time in advance definitely see once the process starts executing how much time it needs to complete its task task cannot be known in advance this is just what we are predicting we are assuming that this is the burst time so it leads to starvation why it leads to starvation is processes with lower burst time keeps on executing and the processes with higher burst time keeps on waiting. See at this point we have taken only 4 processes that's why we are not able to see that whether processes are waiting. Just imagine that a process with lower burst time is assigned to CPU, the next process P2 is assigned to CPU, P3 turn is there now to get executed but there is an another process that has arrived immediately at that point in the ready queue with a lower burst time of uh, compared to p3 so though it was the turn of p3 another process came and that process got executed because it had the lower burst time compared to p3 so this is what we say this particular algorithm leads to starvation this is what you can remember in features similar to what i had given in fcfs i'm just writing down the main features of the algorithm so here I am just writing process with smaller burst time is assigned to CPU. In case of tie, FCFS is used to break the tie. It is non-preemptive in nature. It leads to starvation. It is practically not possible to know the burst time in advance. So this is how you can solve the problem using the shortest job first. So the another version of shortest job first is also available and that is preemptive in nature. So that will be the next topic for discussion. So let me end the session now. Hope this session is useful to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.